Hey, this is Chuck. Mrs. T's bugged out for the weekend to go out and be with some of her friends at a dog show. So since I had the entire weekend to myself and since we're towards the end of October and it's actually going to be really cold out there and I don't have to cut the grass, I thought I'd get creative and see if I couldn't come up with a little bit of an interesting project to do. I'd seen on uh, YouTube earlier where people had gone off and they'd take a Banksia pod and they made uh, pin blanks out of them with the Luma light. Now, I don't have a Luma light. Maybe if I'm a good boy or if I save my allowance, I can get a setup like that for Christmas. But for right now, I don't have it. So I thought I'd come off and improvise. And what I'm going to try and do, and we don't know if it's going to work yet or not, but I'm going to try and go off and use epoxy in place of the Luma light and see if I can't come up with something that's just a little bit different that actually works. I've cut a pod through the center just to kind of give you an idea of what it actually looks like once you start turning it. And you can see the sections here where the cavities actually can kind of almost come all the way down into the center core. What I'd like to do is cut here, 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 and here, see if I can't get four pin blanks out of it and end up ultimately discarding the center core. So. Well, I've cherry picked out which I hope is the best blank of it. It's got some nice um, cavities on three sides actually, four with the core here which I'm sure is going to turn out. and I'm going to scuff up the tube just to make it um, easier for the epoxy to grab a hold of. Before I start the epoxy, I'm going to go ahead and just clean out all the debris and all the drunk, all the junk from all the cavities. Um, take me just a few seconds, then we'll go ahead and we'll get to work on the epoxy. I did find a, um, a nice dental pick that's going to kind of be perfect for what I'm trying to do here. Um, and there's a lot of a lot of junk that's in here, um, little bug parts, and some of them are getting pushed into the inside, and I'll go through and um, take those out uh, when we're done with this. All right, what I want to make sure is that when I'm getting the cavities, I'm also getting these little pieces right here that seem like they're part of it, and, the, and they may well be, but they're going to be an impediment when I go to put the epoxy in. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make sure I scoop these out also. For my next step, what I'm going to do is mix and color the epoxy. I'll put the brass tube in and then I'll start filling in the cavities. Now I'm not sure how it's going to go just yet. Um, my, I envision what I'm going to do is basically um, run some tape along the sides here so I can fill this in without it oozing out and then it'll dry and then I'll start in on another side. But um, I'm kind of making this up as we go along. But I definitely want to have the same color epoxy holding the tube in so that I'm putting into the cavity so that I don't get any, um, any back out, if you will, um, from the tube. And what I did to get coloring, we're going to do a red color. I actually was in Staples and I bought their little dye. Um, I think it was like $1.99 or something. And I've tried dyeing before. It doesn't take much at all, so once I get this mixed up, you're going to see me put in maybe just a drop, and I think that's all I'm going to have to do to get the, the color I'm going for, and this one here, it's going to just be red. All right, one drop, and I think that's going to be enough to get where I want to go. Yeah, that'll be all right. So I'll put the tube in first, and then we'll go in and we'll start filling in some of the cavities. 
And I use these little bamboo toothpicks because they actually do a pretty good job. Well, come in on the other side. And they're pretty inexpensive. You can use it as an insertion tool. You can wipe it up and kind of clean it off. And I'll push that in just a little bit more. There we go. All right. So it's out on both sides. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to start to fill in the um, fill in the cavities. And we'll just wipe that off. And we'll just see how it goes as far as what we're going to do. And I'm going to run this side here. I've never done this before, so I am literally making it up as I go along. But I'm just going to try and fill in each individual crevice. And I'm going to tape this side up here to hold the epoxy in. I'm sure that's the way it's going to go. And I want to try and make sure I can get it all the way down to the tube both for coloring and to make sure I don't hit any air pockets when I'm turning. Um, and that would obviously be one of the advantages to having a little pressure pot, which I don't have. So you got to kind of hope the epoxy can get in there and you can set it in. So I'm going to put this down for right now. I'll take the side up. And then when this epoxy hardens, we'll pull the tape off and we'll um, work on another side then. So it looks like I made up about the right amount to do one side. And I really want to make sure I, I push this in and I get every bit of it in there that I can. And if I miss it, it's okay. I'll come back through. I'd actually thought about turning it a bit, truing it up would cost me less epoxy, but in the end I just decided this might be the better way to do it. All right, we've had this thing, it's been drying now for about 15 minutes or so, and it's a bit tacky, but I think it'll be firm enough that I can take this off. And we'll go ahead and we'll set up another one. And we'll start another side. There we go. Okay. And what I'll do is I'll throw away this. And we'll set some other tape down to start another one. All right, so we're going to start up the second side. It'll be the same as the first. We'll just repeat the procedure. All right, we're going to let this set up. And because it's so thick, it's going to take a while. All right. So we'll set that up, and we'll be back in another 15 or 20 minutes. The second side's hard now, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do the same process, do the third and fourth sides, and then I'll get right back All with right, you guys. All right, it's actually been a
Yeah, we can see a little bit of some gaps here that didn't quite make it through. So we're going to go ahead and we'll form it and then we'll come back through now and we'll fill up the things um, and then we'll do our sanding on it. to leave this on the mandrel but I've got a spot right here that's going to just be too close to the bushing so I took it off and I'll, um, I'll put this um, um, together now while it's off the mandrel let it harden then we'll come back and finish turning it all right it's kind of ugly there but I think we'll be able to turn it out okay all right we'll return it now with the new epoxy on and then we should be ready for the final finish I'm working on 600 grit right now. My original plan was to put the CA on at this time. Um, but if I do, I think I'm just going to be putting the CA over dull, um, over a, a, a dull epoxy. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run the micro mesh on the epoxy up to the... Um, up to the 12,000, see if I can get a shine on that before I put the CA over it. I'll end up putting about a half a dozen coats of the CA on this. And I know everybody's got their own little technique, but I like to put it on. Then I uh, use the macro mesh to bring it up and have a fine shine on it that way. Alright, before I put the micro mesh on, I typically start at 400 and I'll work up to 12 and then I move it to the micro mesh. And we can see it just kind of cleans it up a little bit and anything, any little scratches or anything just kind of get taken out real quick like. So we get a nice smooth finish on it.
and we'll finish up here with the 1200 and then we'll move into the wet micro mesh. And I think we ended up with a pretty nice glass-like finish. And we'll just kind of go through this in just a second as we get it off the mandrel and get a closer look at it. Okay, what we've got now is kind of a before and after shot. And for a first time event, um, I thought it came out pretty well. I've got one little flaw in the epoxy. I don't know if you can catch it in the camera or not, right here. Uh, where there just absolutely was just a gap as I got to turning in the epoxy and I filled it in with super glue. That's why we've got a little bit of that lighter section right there. But otherwise, I thought the epoxy worked real easy. It certainly turned pretty good, sanded pretty good. Um, it was easy to dye and for just kind of a, a new project to go off and try, um, I thought the results were pretty good. I think the thing that I would do next time is I'd set up and do three or four of them at one time that way I wouldn't waste as much of my epoxy um, letting it kind of dry out. Um, and that would be the one thing I know that I'd change immediately um, and then just try and be a little more conscious of getting the epoxy in tight all the way down. And this is the way the final product came out. I'm actually really happy with the way it did for a first attempt at this. Uh, so thanks a whole bunch for watching. Um, I hope this works out for you if you guys get a chance to try it. Take care and have a nice safe one.